Hey guys, today I want to talk about New Year's resolutions. So most people have the experience of making New Year's resolutions only to give up in frustration and self-disgust a few weeks later. And I feel like most New Year's resolutions fail. Not because, you know, we're not good enough or we're not trying hard enough, but because what we're trying to do is hard. You know, if it were easy, it wouldn't really take a New Year's resolution, right? So before I get started with this video, I want to share a tip that I have that might could help you. So the reason I feel like a lot of New Year's resolutions fail is because they're more of a wish. Like a very common one is, well, I wanna start exercising, working out, I wanna get fitter this year, right? Well, a lot of people's New Year's resolutions is they're a wish and not a plan. You know, resolutions alone are not enough. You know, intention is only the first step, but there needs to be a plan to back it all up. Create that step-by-step -step plan of how you're going to make that resolution, you know, that goal and accomplishment work. You can just wish, oh yeah, I wanna, you know, I wanna get fitter or lose some weight or whatever. Then you need to figure out how you're going to do that. Are you going to be focusing more on your diet and eating a more, nutritious you know diet limiting all the junk are you going to be going to the gym you know exercising you know figure out what you're going to do to accomplish getting fitter and losing weight that year or you know whatever every everybody's plan is going to be different right i mean this has to be tailored to you don't just wish for something to happen you know you have to make it happen but yeah so before i got started on the actual video that was just kind of like a little tip i wanted to have on how to actually like accomplish the New Year's resolutions on your list. But anyway, so moving on with the main video, I'm not really a New Year's resolution sort of person. I kind of feel like if you wanted to make a change in your life or you wanted to start up something new, you would kind of just start whenever. You wouldn't just wait until the next year, you know, you would just begin. But yeah, I do think it is good to find ways and like make plans and goals and intentions on improving and enhancing your life. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some of the intentions I've set myself for this year. Now the first one, I guess, isn't really an intention just because I do this every single year and I always have for, I mean, so many years, probably like, I don't even know, like probably 10 plus years. That is to declutter and get rid of the things that I haven't used the previous year. Now I've already kind of decluttered um, some of my things that I no longer wanted, no longer used. About a few months ago, I'm we're in the process of moving. We are hoping to move at the beginning, middle of this year. Um, so we've already kind of, um, you know, started getting rid of things. Like clothes is a big one. Like if I didn't wear an outfit or like a shirt or a clothing piece that entire year, probably need to get rid of it. Books, if I'm no longer interested, I'll, I'll declutter anything, go through all my papers, files, do I still need this, you know, what, you know, you know, just go through my things and just declutter and it feels so good to declutter. I've gotten to the point now where almost everything I have, I pretty much want, you know, especially when you're doing this on a regular basis. So the next one is I want to take more classes. Archery is one. I love archery, but I haven't done it since I was in like, what, fifth grade? Pottery, I've been really interested in pottery. I really want to try pottery, um, hot yoga, you know, to start taking some classes, having some experiences, you know, whether I go alone or, um, you know, I go with Rudy or go with, you know, somebody, whether it's alone or with somebody, I want to um, take a class, not like a 12 week course or like some sort of like class like that, but just, just like a one day thing. The next one is I really want to take more steps into becoming more zero in low waste. Now, I've done a lot since the start of my journey in 2018, but about the past year, I haven't really made any changes and I really want to um, start making more things from scratch. I've already been testing like jam and jelly recipes. I found a strawberry jam and a mixed berry jam I like. Um, been playing around with like pad thai sauces, you know, just trying to make zero waste sauces, you know, from whole plant food ingredients and not like packaged things. 
um, making my own vegetable broth from veggie scraps, um, making my, you know, tomato sauce, nut butters, nut milks, you know, with the almond milk cartons and stuff like that, you, you can't recycle those. And, you know, when it comes to like pasta sauce jars and, you know, nut butters and stuff, yeah, you have the glass jar that you can recycle, but I'm trying to, you know, not use any packaging, not really bringing any packaging in my home, because if I'm not buying anything packaged, there's nothing to then throw away and add to landfill, right? So I just want to become more zero waste in the kitchen and, you know, making things from scratch. That's kind of like the next step I want to take in my zero waste journey. Next one is to be more present and spend more quality time with my kids. I feel like I do the best I can given the time I have, but I really want more time with my kids. Um, maybe there's got to be a change in the routine. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this um, because I think what's really stopping me from spending as much time with the kids that I want is because I have a job that I work outside the home. So I feel like my morning is just waking up, um, you know, getting the kids ready, getting myself ready for work you know, doing household chores, then I go to work, we come home, or I come home, um, eat dinner, then we go to bed. The hours I work, I just feel like it removes me so much from the home and I don't get to spend as much time home or with the kids that I like. And my days off, sure, you know, I'm with the kids, I guess, but I have to, since I'm so busy during the work week, my days off, it's doing all the things that I don't have time to do on my work days, you know, but my days off aren't really days off. It, you know, it's running errands, doctor's appointments, you know, doing the laundry. I have to do laundry outside the home. I have to go to my mom's to do laundry. And, you know, it's just, my days off are so busy and it's like, my kids are with me, sure, but you know, we're not spending quality time together. You know what I mean? I don't quite know how I'm gonna do that, but I feel like there's got to be a way. There's gotta be a better way than how things are going on right now. Another thing along the lines of investing more time into my relationships is going on dates with Rudy. Since Amelia has been born, so like what? almost four years now. In these four years, we've only gone on one date. And that is because we went out to California, um, went out to California, you know, to visit my family, but my dad and stepmom watched Amelia while me and Rudy um, went to LA and we stayed the night there. We'll go out and we'll do things like as a family, and I love family time, right? But I would like for something to just be me and Rudy talking about things other than the kids, you know, us two just being adults, being a couple and not having to worry about tantrums and meltdowns and diaper changes and, you know, just the constant demands of raising young children and you know, it's just, I feel like every couple, you know, needs time alone. Cause I mean, what's gonna happen when the kids, you know, go off on their own when they're 18, 20 years old or whatever. I mean, when the kids move off on their own, it's just gonna be, you know, you and your spouse, you know, you and your partner. I mean, so you can't just base your relationship around the kids, right? Like you have to, you know, invest time into your relationship as a couple without the kids. You know, every couple just needs that one-on-one -on -one quality time, right? And it's just something we do not get enough of. And this is another thing where it's like hard because it's not that we don't want to go on dates. It's not that we haven't wanted to. It's because we don't have anybody to watch the kids, right? It's like when, you know, you're pregnant and stuff, it's like everyone always tells you like, oh, if you need anything, I'm here for you. Or if you ever need time away from the kids, just give me a call, right? But then when you make those calls or send those texts, it's like they're always busy or they don't want to, or you get that backlash like, oh, they're your kids, they're not my responsibility. Or um, somebody will tell us that they're gonna watch the kids, but then the day before they're like, oh no, I'm sorry, I've made other plans. And it's like, you had plans with me. And it's like, this is another thing. I don't really know, you know, I don't have a step-by-step -step plan on how I'm gonna do this, but. Next intention for this year is to read the Bible. I know that may sound so bizarre to some people, but in the past years I've had, you know, 
New Year's resolutions and intentions to read all the books on my shelf. And I have done that. I've read every single book on my shelf except for two. I'm in the process of one and the only other book I have on my shelf to read is the Bible. I know this sounds like such a bad Christian of me, but I have put the Bible last because I have tried so many times in the past to read the Bible and guys, I've never made it past Genesis. Just the way it reads and I just, I just can't understand it and it, it's just not, you know, and if I'm gonna be reading the Bible, it's something I'm gonna need to understand, <laughs> right? So, um, my grandmother just passed down her Bible to me and I gave it a little bit of a flip through and it looks like the terminology is a little bit easier to read. Now that I've gotten just about every other book on my shelf read, I can finally just sit down and just focus on the Bible. Next one is to spend more time outdoors. Again, this isn't one of those, it's not because I don't want to just already. It's just, I feel like the way life is set up right now is just time just doesn't allow for it. Like I said, work and just busy doing other things and chores and errands and, you know, just demands of the day, right? It's really hard to just, you know, just take the kids out and play or just go for a walk. I, oh my God, I used to go on walks all the time with the kids and then now it's like, it just seems like there's just no time anymore. And again, this is another thing. I don't really know how I'm gonna make it work, but I'm going to make it work. I just love being out in nature and it's just so peaceful. It's so grounding. I can't really describe how I feel when I'm outdoors, but I just love it and I don't do it enough. So I'm gonna make it a point to really start doing it and just carving out time for it. So that is it for today's video and everything I've run down on my list, like spending more time outdoors, you know, spending more time with the kids, more time with my partner. A lot of these are what I want to implement in my life in general, not just for this year, but for the years to come as well. But yes, if there's anything in your life you want to start, implement, anything you wanna change, don't wait start today. That sounded like some sort of infomercial thing, but I'm serious. Don't be afraid to leave down in the comments any of your New Year's resolutions or intentions, and let's get a conversation going. Let's inspire each other. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!